It's such a joy and a delight to have you join us for today's broadcast. I trust that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you. Why don't you sit back, relax, and please don't change that channel and let us see what God has to say to us today. What God knows is his investment in you and the fact that God knows that our world is at the mercy of you fulfilling your assignment. You have to understand something. Satan does not mind you reading New York Times because reading New York Times will not help you. But he minds you reading your Bible because he knows that when you have your Bible, you become a terror to his kingdom. So now, your service to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is what gives you significance. It is what answers the significant question. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Ye, he uses the word ye, is pluralistic in its form because he's talking to all of us as a corporate body. Ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Romans chapter 12 verses 4 and 5 in the New Living Translation. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, New Living Translation. Look at what it says. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Can you say amen? Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 verse number 6. Paul speaking. He said, I planted the seed in your hearts. And Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. Notice there had to be a sequence there. Paul had to plant and Apollos had to water before God could make it grow. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, accepting your assignment. Child of God, it's important that you understand that after you come to God in Christ, the next question that is critical for your life it's not who do I get married to or who my kids will be. Or, or, it's not that those things are not important. It is that the implications of those things on our lives are limited to this world alone. I know you love your spouse, but please note that it's always till death do us part. Do you still love me? But the God you serve is your God forever and ever and ever. Your most important question after you come to know him is what is my assignment? What have you called me to do with my life in your kingdom, in your vineyard? It is the vision question. You must distinguish it from the ambition question. Ambition is what I want done. Oh, I want to do this. I want to be that. I want to. Ambition is self generated, it is selfish, it's self originated, and oftentimes it's self aggrandizing. Vision is from God, it's what God wants you to do, what God has called you to do. And it's always a blessing to people. 
God calls you to be a blessing to humanity. He calls you to be a blessing to his body. And he calls you to make the world a better place. He calls you the salt of the earth. Let me explain that to you. <coughs> salt, <coughs> salt, when Jesus said that, he said that on the day where they didn't have no refrigerator. Salt has a dual purpose. Yes, it makes, it gives food taste. Food is tasteless without salt. Without salt, many of us don't want to eat because it's tasteless. It's to let you know that if we take you out of this world, this world will become tasteless. But beyond all of that, salt is also a preservative. That was the refrigerator they had in the days of Jesus. That was what they used to keep food fresh, all they had. I'm not sure the Lord will have used the salt of the earth if he preached the same message in our time. You're critical to his purpose. Always understand that. God needs you. The body of Christ needs you. Our world needs you. God has blessed you so much and has given you so much and sustained you because of what God knows is his investment in you and the fact that God knows that our world is at the mercy of you fulfilling your assignment. Say amen with me, somebody. So, Apostle Paul uses this brilliant, brilliant depiction of the human body, the human anatomy, to describe to us who we are and how we are in our place and our functioning in the kingdom of God. And I'm not sure there's any better description. I want us to look at that for a minute and glean some truth, some wisdom to that, so that we can all, uh, as it were, digest and assimilate it and in inculcate it in our own personal work with God and as we serve him in his vineyard. First of all, it ought to let you know that we're supposed to walk in unison and that we are one body, different parts, but one body. That means we have one united purpose. As members of the body of Christ, there is a calling we have that is common to every one of us, one body. Praise the Lord. If I have a goal to move from here, to where Dickiness Ufoma is, I am moving my whole body because that goal inculcates every part of that body. The work of ministering to those that don't know God all around us is not unique to those who are ministry gifts or those who are evangelists, no. It is an instruction to all of us. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, as you go, tell about me. Hallelujah. So we have goals like that, that is unique to every single one of us. But, uh, if, but uh, as, we, as we understand that now, it's important that we also understand that we do have goals that is unique to every one of us. That what my eyes do is different from what my ears do. Praise the Lord. My eyes might want to hear, and as much as they want to hear, but will never be able to hear, no matter how much surgery you do. Did you hear what I just said? See, when I understand that, I understand that though there's some things that I admire, and People that I admire who sing. Sister Debbie was singing the other day, uh, you know, and I was entering the church and, and, and she was singing. It was just angelic. And I was like, wow, I wish I could sing like that. In fact, I think I could sing like that. I do. I do. In my spirit, when I hear myself sing, I feel like I sing better than Donnie McLaughlin. 
True story. True story. Not this church, the, 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 the old, old, old church. Uh, one day, you know, the choir, they came late, you know. I was a young, brash pastor. I got angry because I told them before, service starts at 11. See, there's a lot of improvement. Those of you that journey come late, you don't know where we came from. You should thank the Lord. They came out of there, was around 11 o'clock. I just got mad, I went up. I started praise and worship. Minister Ken joined me. <laughs> Why are you all laughing? True story. After choir, 10 people joined the room. After church, after church, 10 people joined the room. So I've told his gorgeous wife that anytime they need help, you know who to consult. <laughs> what am I trying to say? As you move along in life, you begin to identify what you're good at, what you're great at, what you're gifted to do. That's why it's so silly comparing children with children because they're all differently gifted. You birthed them, but you didn't gift them. Stop trying to make one do this and make the other do that. Stupid. Stupid. <clears throat> you don't decide what you're good at. You discover it. You discover I'm good at this, like I'm great at this. Because you can't hear yourself sing, you can't hear yourself preach. It's by the feedback that you get and you have to be alert and attentive to who you are. That's the problem with many of us in the body of Christ. We are more attentive to other people instead of being attentive to ourselves. But God did not call you to other people. He called you to you. And as long as you're so busy watching what I do. Oh God, excuse me. Thank you, Lord. What's in your heart? What upsets you? What do you find in church that you think needs to be changed? Stop criticizing and start fixing. Praise the Lord. The reason why you see it and I cannot see it is because you are the eyes and I'm the knees. Praise the Lord. So you're blaming me. Oh, why didn't they do this in this church? Why didn't they do that in this church? Why didn't they do that? No, 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 no. The reason why that's in your heart is because you are supposed to do it. If I could see it, I would have done it since. But I have not done it because I could not see it. So God called you because we are all members of one body and we belong to each other so that you can do it so that the body of Christ can be blessed because this is God house and God's kingdom your gift your talent he never gives it to you in a perfect form <clears throat> he doesn't see people who don't understand how God works they miss out on God because if you ask God for a house he won't give you a house. He'll give you bricks and mortars. Because he wants you to use your hands. He gave you hands. He gave you a mind to think and brain to figure stuff out. To use the bricks and mortars he's given you to build the house you want. Ask him for a plane. He won't give you a Gulf Stream. No. He'll give you steel. So you can use the seal he's given you to build the kind of plane you want. Ask him for a wife, he will not give you a wife. He'll give you a woman. <clears throat> but she doesn't come as a wife, she comes as a woman. He comes as a man. It is with your tax and your love and your wisdom that you build they come as children not angels children praise the lord you have to build <clears throat> by your love by your ingenuity with your patience build the same thing with the gifts we have they don't come they don't come perfect they come rudimentary 
So you have to pay attention to your own gift. You have to hone it and you have to develop it and you have to practice it. Whatever it is, you have to develop it and practice it. Practice it. Look at those who have gone before you. Uh, what have they done and assimilate that, acclimatize that to what God has called you to do so that you can be better at what God has called you to do so you can do a greater job for God. You understand what I'm saying? But you learn from people who have gone before you and they are doing what you want to do and they are where you want to get to and you want to succeed. You, you, you are not, you, are, you don't belong to the camp of people who envy successful people. Just because you don't have it, you bad talk them. It's because you are envious. Stop hating, celebrate. So whatever it is, maybe you have a, you, you, you're called to be an entrepreneur, you're called to business, or, or whatever it is, you're called to music, you, you, have, to, you have to look at, look at people that have gone before you, look, look at people that God has given influence, look at, look at how they've done it, look at how they've mastered their art and how they've mastered their craft, and what can you learn from them, what can you assimilate from the first service, uh, 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 Jason's mom, sister from she was going, oh, 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 oh help me sing choir oh i said look at look at like a like bad self <laughs> oh, say, she did that thing i was like wow well that's what happens so you watch other people you watch youtube don't go on youtube just to watch foolishness no you got to watch stuff that's empower you that will strengthen you that will encourage you that will make you better at what you do that will sharpen your battle axe so you can do a more effective job for god you have to understand something satan does not mind you reading new york times because the new york times will not help you but he minds you reading your bible because he knows that when you have your bible you become a terror to his kingdom so now oh i'm not saying not to read new york times i'm saying do not spend all of your time reading new york times or watching tv or watching nba you got to get some time into something that will empower you and something that will strengthen you something that will build you up oh. are you hearing what i'm saying Thank you, Jesus. You have to walk on it. Tell somebody, walk on it. Walk on it. Nobody can walk it like you. Whatever is put in your heart, whatever is placed in your soul, your service to God has implications in this world and in the world to come. The car you drive has implications only in this world. The clothes you wear has implications only in this world. The spouse you marry, only implications in this world. You don't want to believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. 100 years from now, nobody's going to care what designer designed your suit. Whether it's a skirt suit or a man suit, it makes no difference. Praise the Lord. It's hard to preach this message in Houston because you all live in brand new houses. But if you follow me to New York, I will show you homes that if they pay you a mortgage to live, you say you don't want. You didn't hear what I said? Homes in New York. If they say, uh, the, the, the bank said, hey, uh, Mr. James, we will pay you a mortgage of 2000 every month for you to own the house. You say, no, thank you. Because time trashes every earthly treasure. You hear me say that before? I heard that from James Dobson. Time trashes every earthly, every, every earthly treasure. Because James Dobson, when he was in high school, he, you know, did all through, he jumped, he's that, uh, wanted to be tennis champion, got to be tennis, cut long, long story, the whole long story, but cut it short. Became tennis champion, they put the thing in the, uh, you know, the school where you enter, the, the, the transparency thing, they put the trophy there, James Dobson, this, 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 this. Some years after, somebody mailed it to him, told him they found it in the trash. 
I know you think it's the end of the world, but let me tell you something. Keep growing. Let time go. Eventually, they will clear the thing for new stuff. Where do you think you're going to put it? Hundred years from now, all of those things, but your service to God. Did you hear what I just said? Your service to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is what gives you significance. It is what answers the significant question. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that has come and say, meat, the King James word for food or nourishment. The reason why you feel empty, even though other people think you're so successful. You know, people can think you're wonderful and you feel you're lousy. It's a horrible place to be. Praise the Lord. And the worst thing you can do is to live your life trying to impress people who don't care about you. How many of us do that? Praise the Lord. You go to the car shop and you order a Maserati. You know the only reason why you want that thing is because you want to impress your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your friend. Let me not get in trouble. And the Messiah is all cool until the first mortgage bill comes. <laughs> now, watch this. First car payment. Watch this. <laughs> Everybody is thinking you it, and you are miserable. <laughs> because they think you look cool in the Messiah, you are thinking about car payment. you can do is to starve in a supermarket. And if you're not careful, if we are not careful and we get caught in the rat race, we will allow people to knock off our joy because we're trying to live life to impress people who don't care anything about us. You're way too important to I'm not sure if it's okay to say this in church. You're way too important to care about what other people think. Praise the Lord. Because what's going to give you significance. I was telling you my own story. I was telling them my own story in the first service. Because I wasn't born into Christianity or nothing. I was born and raised Muslim. Never read the Bible until for the first 18 years of my life. And I went to Bible school, none like that. No Sunday school, none like that. When I came to God in Christ, just about a week after, I knew I was called to preach the gospel. It was a medical school. Medical school to residents, extremely busy. And I gave God excuse after excuse after excuse why I cannot do it. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. If you are like I was and you're giving God excuse, you, don't, you, don't, you never have time. You have to make time. It is never, uh, that's a good place to clap, by the way. A good place to clap. I'm just telling you now, I'm just telling you because the lie of the enemy is, oh, when I uh, uh, finish school, oh, when I get married, Oh, when I have kids. Oh, when the kids grow up. Oh, because the enemy wants you to suspend the only thing that you need to do that will really give you the joy and the significance that your soul craves. Don't fall for the lie of the enemy. It's going to be like that. And one day, rest in this, I'm like, that's it. Because... See, we're in church. Let's, let's, let's tell the truth. Can we tell the truth? I did not come to this country because I wanted to pastor a church. Grace International. No, that's not why I came. I heard doctors make a lot of money in America. So I... I'm just telling the truth. I'll tell you the truth. I came here to make my money and I was not doing bad. I passed the exams, well on my way. I just realized that I wasn't happy. 
Let me tell you something. If one million dollars cannot make you happy, five million will not. Five billion will not. 500 billion will not. Because it is not... Uh, do not discover on your deathbed what you should discover now. Many men discovered this on their deathbed and wish they could relive life again because they have spent all their years doing stuff that was nonsensical. You need to know that now and apply yourself appropriately. So I knew I could never be happy just doing this. It was clear to me. It was clear to me. We had been in Trinidad. I earned good. We came here. I was earning good. So when my colleagues told me, let's go play golf on Sunday morning, and I did go once or twice, and I felt more miserable, I knew this was not for me. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you have to be willing to be an outcast with men so that you can be an incast with God. I just got home and told Pastor Alice's residency, it's busy, we didn't have time. I said, we are starting. Because God, oh God, how can I tell you this? See, let me tell you something. Is that thing you don't have that God wants? Did you hear what I just said? I don't have money. The little you have, that's the one God wants. I don't have time. The little you have, that's the one God wants. Because he gave you what was important to him. He deserves what's important to you. God does not want no leftover. God does not deserve no leftover. Thank you, Jesus. You have 12 hours and you give God an hour. That's not to shout about. He's the God that gave you Jesus. His only begotten son. His son. He gave him to be crucified like a dog. Because he wanted to redeem you. There's we are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to come to your home, your office, or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast. Now, if you don't know Jesus, can I pray with you? Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. I receive you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please call to let us know. Our phone number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Or if you want us to pray with you concerning anything, we would love to agree with you in prayer. But be kind to go onto our website, call into our church office, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Additionally, if the message has been a blessing to you and you want the message in its entirety for a small donation to the ministry, we will rush the CD or the DVD to you. Call in, let us know, we'll get it down to you. And if you're ever in the Houston area, we would love to have you fellowship with us at Grace International Church. Look forward to seeing you. And remember these words from Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the B part says, And we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We will be back at this same station at this same time next week to bring you more word from the Lord. We love you. God bless you.